This is the most dominant engine in Formula One history. This thing won 155 Grand Prix, 131 pole positions, and even completed the Triple Crown, winning Monaco, the Indy 500, and Le Mans. But it's not from one of the modern day powerhouses like Mercedes, Ferrari, or Honda. It's a Ford, and a pretty special one. This engine changed the course of Formula One, but not because it's got a special trick or one clever innovation. No, it's because it had dozens of them. That's down to the fact that it was designed by one of the greatest engine designers in history. And where modern engines are designed in CAD software, in simulations, or made in CNC machines, this thing was hand-drawn and handmade. So let me show you why it's so incredible. This is its designer, Keith Duckworth. Every firing stroke, of which there's 92 per cylinder per second, is a force of about seven tons on the piston. So the whole of the forces involved in an engine are colossal. Duckworth worked for Cosworth, the team that designed the Ford Cosworth DFV. And that project came about because Formula One had moved from 1.5 litre engines to 3 litre versions. And when that happened, Colin Chapman of Lotus was left with an issue. He was currently running the bizarre, unreliable and uncompetitive H16 engines and wanted something else. You can't blame him really, we actually made a video about that engine. It was essentially two V8s stuck together and it loved to blow up. Of course, watch that video after this one. Then Cosworth approached Ford for some funding and they granted Duckworth £100,000 to develop an engine to compete at the front of Formula One. The rules were pretty simple. Three litres, naturally aspirated, and you could pick any arrangement of any number of cylinders. Now, the majority of engine builders at the time were aiming at the most cylinders for the most power. Ferrari, Maserati and Honda were all making V12s, whilst BRM were using an H16, as we mentioned earlier. But Duckworth went another way. He liked to see the performance of a Formula One car as a whole. He knew a greater cylinder count could lead to more power, but a simpler V8 could come with its own benefits. It could be smaller, lighter, and rev higher. And that's where the DFV started. It actually started life as two four-cylinder engines at the time, the FVA. This was the engine Cosworth were designing for Formula 2 at the time. And it had four valves per cylinder, rather than the conventional two, meaning it could get more air and fuel in, as well as more exhaust gases out. A freer breathing engine means more power and more revs. So the Formula 1 engine was called the DFV, the double four valve. Now, if you like the idea of learning more about the skills needed to design an engine, science, technology, engineering, and maths, you should check out today's sponsor, brilliant.org, for free. You can learn about the fundamentals of these principles in their excellent classical mechanics course, where they use Formula One to explain physical mechanics. But if that isn't for you, they have thousands of visual lessons that enable you to learn by doing. So you could learn about coding, geometry, or even calculus. There is anything you could think of within the worlds of science, computer science, and maths. But brilliant, know that you're busy, so they make their courses bite-sized. So you can tackle learning complex subjects for just 15 minutes at a time. And there's always a practical application to their courses that really puts your knowledge to the test. It's that extra layer of learning that traditional methods just don't do, but Brilliant does. Try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. Visit brilliant.org forward slash drive61 or click on the link in the description. First 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription and you'll want to take advantage of that. Thanks to Brilliant and now back to the video. The DFE was first in the Lotus 49 and you might recognize this as one of the most iconic Formula 1 cars ever, designed by Colin Chapman and driven by Graham Hill and Jim Clark. It was an instant hit. The engine was producing just over 400 horsepower and revving to 9,000 RPM. And so Graham Hill put the car on pole position in the first race, but it did have its issues. Graham Hill was leading the engine's first race at Zandvoort when a tooth snapped off one of the cam gears, meaning that the timing jumped out. And well, we all know what happens then. The piston smashes the valve. This smashed a hole through the piston, bending the conrod before the crank came around again and the conrod came through the side of the block. A catastrophic failure that happened in less than a second. Anyway, with Hill out, Jim Clark in the other Lotus came from the back of the grid 
to win that race. So not bad for the engine's first outing. Now, this engine didn't get all of the 155 wins from Lotus. The success of this engine came from the fact that Cosworth sold it at a great price to anyone who wanted it. Lotus, McLaren, Matra, Brabham, March, Tyrrell, honestly, the list goes on. It was putting cars from the mid 60s when they looked like this, all the way up to the early 80s, when things got a bit mad and the cars were using ground effect to create incredible downforce. But why was the engine so good? Well, in my eyes, there were a number of reasons for it. First, it was very high revving. Duckworth knew that with fewer cylinders than the other teams, he needed to get more revs to compete on power. So he went for a 32 valve design, four valves per cylinder rather than the traditional two, allowing for more flow of fuel and air in and more exhaust gases out. On top of this, Duckworth designed the engine's components to be as light as possible. Because when you make the engine's rotating components lighter, you can allow for more revs and so more power. With this in mind, instead of a cross-plane crank that looks like this, he used a flat-plane crank. These are lighter, and while they produce less low-end torque, they do produce more top-end power, which is what you want in Formula 1. It also made an awesome sound. Just listen to the DFB V8. It absolutely screams. And it also changed the firing order, meaning that the exhaust system could actually be a bit simpler. Secondly, Duckworth designed the engine to be load-bearing, meaning that the engine actually formed the structure of the car, where the suspension mounted to the engine and gearbox. And this was new at the time and has since been copied throughout Formula 1. But it actually made the engine a bit heavier, as before the parts didn't need to be quite as strong. The engine casing actually needed to be beefed up a little bit to carry the suspension loads. But Duckworth again was thinking from first principles. The engine would be a little bit heavier, but the car would be lighter. With this system, you no longer need a space frame chassis to carry the suspension loads and support the engine, making the car lighter and more simple. Thirdly, the packaging was small. Where other teams were using long and wide V12s, the DFV was compact. It had a 90 degree V angle, with the cold air entering the engine from the middle of the V and the exhaust coming out of the side. It meant the exhaust packaging was tighter and the engine was simply easier to put in the car. And this may sound like a small advantage, but it's one of the main reasons the engine stuck around for so long. Remember, Ferrari and Alfa Romeo were using flat V12s at this point, making use of the lower center of gravity that they allowed, but the DFV was very different. Because whilst this engine was used in the 60s in cars like the Lotus 49, it was also used in the mid 70s when the ground effect cars were taking over. And this ground effect type of car required a narrow engine. Just check out this clip from an 80s documentary about the DFV. The ground effect wing will only work if there is space between the rear wheels and the engine block, allowing the air from under the car to diffuse into the wake. The rear of a Ferrari is filled with engine because it is a flat 12, six cylinders on either side, which are impossible to move out of this airstream. So its size meant it was the only option for those looking to make full use of the ground effect Venturi tunnels. So whilst the DFV didn't have the power of the early turbo cars, it more than made up for it by allowing for more downforce. Again, thinking of the whole car. But the main feature of the DFV was its completeness in design. Cosworth worked from first principles to design exactly the engine F1 needed, and absolutely no excess. It was powerful, efficient, lightweight, and easy to package in a car. And on top of all of that, it was was reliable, meaning that teams had a hard time choosing anything else. When the turbo engine eventually took over Formula 1 in 1972, the DFE had won 155 Grand Prix, taking 12 drivers to world championships and won with drivers like Graham Hill, Jackie Stewart, Emerson Fittipaldi, James Hunt, Mario Andretti, and the list goes on. Now, if you like F1 engines, you should watch this video on the incredible but bizarre BRM H16 engine. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.